that something fell to Delilah. That Delilah is anything you love that you give control of your life to. It's hurting you, but you don't want to stop it. And I told you, I said, don't, if you don't stop Delilah, Delilah will stop you from fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. Hallelujah. Then last, that was two months ago. Then last month, we saw uh, another part of Samson's error that he did not pay attention to the strategic way the devil uh, applied to bring him down. And I told us last week, month, I said, if the devil wants to bring you down, he won't start with a killer strike. You remember that he will start with a, 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 um, um, not a, I want to use the same words I use. Uh, he will start with a weakening strike. Yes. When he took the honey, when he married, uh, he went to date uh, uh, a Philistine girl. Nothing happened to him physically, but he was depreciating spiritually. When he took the honey, nothing happened to him physically, but he didn't know that he was depreciating. The devil was bringing him closer. When he slept in the prostitute's house, nothing happened to him physically, but he was, the covenant was breaking gradually. The devil does not kill overnight. That's why the Bible says he comes to steal, to kill, he does not come to start to kill first. He comes to steal first. Then he will kill. Then he will destroy. So learn from Samson. Thank you, those of you in the media, for helping us to hide this. So let's, today we are going to be looking at my summary. I summarized the life of Samson and I brought out this and I want you to learn from it. Let's take our anchor scripture from 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 25 to 27. Let's look at the song that King David composed for his friend Jonathan and his boss, King Saul. You know, this song, ah, Pastor MC will remember when we were in CCM, How Are the Mighties Falling? Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a song that everybody used to register, that mighties follow. Can I tell you the truth? Mighties are still falling. Now, let's read together after the count of three. Let's, can we rise up? The first scriptural reading. One, two, and let's go. How are the mighties fall? I didn't hear you. Let's start again. How are the mighty falling in the midst of battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in, the, in thy high places. I am distressed for thee. My brother Jonathan, very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of a woman then 27 Paul said how are the mighty falling and the weapons of war perished be seated be seated you know if you read through the whole when you get to go and take time to read that second Samuel chapter one uh jonathan uh, sorry david had to describe that they they the arrow of Jonathan never misses. If Jonathan should aim at anything, he will get it. Once he shoots his arrow, it does not come out. He said the, the sword of Saul was never tired of drinking blood. So he now saw, he, when he heard that they were dead, ah, these, were, these are mighty men. Men that are, are who, who can kill them just like that. So he had to compose the song. How are the mighty falling? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Falling in the midst of battle. How are the weapons of war perishing? Now, beloved, can I tell you the truth? So many mighty men, mighty women in the kingdom are falling now. In fact, some people you are, you are thinking are on fire for Jesus are only on fire in the physical. Some people, they have lost their fire. All they have is what we call packaging. And you know, this particular generation, one thing I love about this generation that makes me afraid is that they can package in such a way that you will think that, uh uh, they and God, they are eating together. I, I watched one on the internet, I was shocked. The man was preaching and he said, Hold on, God is calling me. And he took his phone, hello, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Ah. And I was saying in my play, in my, in my, where I sat in my office, ah, network, who alone, one look by his phone. I was shocked. Hey, I've never seen this, this type before. 
Then he went on, he preached. After some time, he paused again. He said, wait, let me call him again. He dialed God's number. Ah, hey. Oh, dial the number. Oh, dial the number. Oh, dear, but it's not. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You know, and by the time he finished, he started prophesying to people. We are in a world that they have left the, the real thing and they are focused on packaging. You enter some churches, you say, God is here. Is it the lightning that we want to talk about? Is it the smoke on the altar? Is it the, 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 the well-organized uh, uh, choir? They will sing like this, eh? Hey, mighty are falling. I say again, mighty are falling. But for you and I not to fall, because if care is not taken, even we that are original may begin to feel that we don't have it again. I'm telling you. Let me tell you this brief story. I was invited to preach in a church, and the man of God was celebrating first year anniversary. Sir, governor was present. First year anniversary. I came back home. I came back in tears. I was saying, Lord, what am I doing? Are you sure you called me? Uh-uh. You know, I started accusing and getting angry because first year, I was also invited to minister second year. On to the fourth year, it was at the, at the fourth year, after preaching, I was discouraged. Mighty, mighty people were in the church. I got back home. I slept in discouragement. And I had a, a voice of thunder said, let me show you now who this man is. So I saw him dancing. And dancing and dancing and coming towards the church. And that's what I used to do. I'll be the guest preacher. He won't show up at all throughout. He won't come out until I finish preaching. It is when I finish preaching, he will now come out of his office and begin to prophesy. Hear me? Let me show you. So he was dancing and coming. He was dancing and coming. And all of a sudden, he got to a point. His clothes just became transparent. He said, son, see, I saw tortoise on his chest. I saw charms tied around his waist and I had the voice said to me that is who he is beloved I still did not believe until his wife had to come up one day to find to confide in me pastor please help me I said help you to do what ma he said this big mummies see bringing money to our church my husband have sex with them he said, when they come to our house, they will tell me to just go and sit down. I will sit down in the sitting room. He will be with them in the bedroom. I'm telling you a true life story. He said, and I dare not cross the room. He said, but there's something we need. They don't supply. And I was to minister in their church. They printed a very big billboard. Put it all around the bottom. I, I switched off my phone. That was my, I just decided I will have to disconnect. So if care is not taken, eh, you that you are original. Eh, because if you see original things, they don't have packaging the way fake has it. Let's look at our message today. Hallelujah. I don't hear beloved. People are falling, backsliding, losing their, their commitment every day on the battlefield of life. As we take the concluding part today, it is important we pick important lessons that can be used to guide our own life. In Judges chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, Samson's falling was clearly documented. Let's look at it. Judges 16, 30 and 31. Judges 16, 30 and 31. Bala basa tayanga da baskine. Judges 16, 30 and 31. 
Look at this. The Bible says, and Samson said, let me die. With the Philistines. Samson the great. <laughs> and he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death was more than they which he slew in his life. If Samson made heaven, eh, it would be by extreme mercy. Because what he did was suicide. Let's go. 31. 31. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came, came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and next to her in the burying place of Mona, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. But look at how he ended his journey. When it is time for me to go, I prefer the kind of death of Jacob. The Bible says he gathered his sons. He prophesied over them. He blessed them. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost. But look at how Samson died. He begged to die with his enemies. A man who ruled over Israel for 20 years as judge. Now let's, let's analyze his fall. Let's look at what brought Samson down. We are going to take it one after the other. I wrote here, see how the Messiah of their time ended his life. What are important lessons that we must speak? Number one, if you will last in leadership, the first most important principle is that you should set boundary lines concerning very important things, concerning very important things that the devil can capitalize on to destroy you. I come again. If you will last in leadership, the first most important principle is that you should do what? Set boundary lines concerning very important things. Now listen, there are so many things in life, but there are few important things. Now and when I talk about important things, I'm talking about the principles that you and I know is making you who you are and whom God wants you to be. Now, and when we are talking about drawing a line, I'm talking about you saying, black and white, these are the things that I cannot do. I will point them to you as I go. That's why, hear me, whoever does not live his life based on principles can never last. You cannot be careless with your life and expect to last. Oh, will it last? But will it last? You cannot be available to all and expect to last. You cannot be everywhere and expect to last. You cannot open your arms to everything and expect to last. If you ask my sister, you are a school owner. How do parents see us during school fees drive? Wicked. Okay, you two, you are a school owner. Wicked. Bad people. As if we are not in Nigeria together. And you'll be shocked. These are parents that if you, if you see the, kind of, the number of snacks that their children come with to school. I was, I, <laughs> we had this small talk shop and it, I, I was asking them to check out the things they said. Do you know that this uh, um, um, uh, fresh yo uh, uh, that's more, it's 150 naira. I didn't know how these things are expensive. And you will see parents buy 150 naira Fresh you every day for their children. Two two biscuits of sixty six naira, one fifty plus one twenty. That's how much. Two seventy in a week. That's how much. Calculate for me. Calculate five days. One thousand three three fifty. Now in a, in a month. That's how much. Calculate for me. Put two together. Three fifty seven hundred. One thousand seven. Three thousand four hundred. That's for four weeks. Times three months. A time is three months. Oh yeah. Calculate for me now. Sixteen thousand two hundred naira for snacks. How much is the school fees? Now it's it's to show you that people don't understand important things. 
talk less of knowing how to draw the line. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. I'm sorry. Now, if you look at the life of Samson, you will see that the major problem of Samson is that Samson was a man with no principle. He slept anywhere. There was a day he was coming from the battlefield. The only place, he, he just passed through this, the house of the pilot. He slept there. He got to the gate. They have closed the, the gate. Samson has no respect for restriction. He carried the gate. <laughs> got to the mountain, threw it down. There was a day too he was passing. He felt hungry. He saw B on the lion's uh, carcass. He went there. He scoped it as long as he wanted food to eat. He made a promise to his, uh, his, the family of his wife. You can solve my riddle. I will give you so so and so garments. I will give you so and so things. When they solved the riddle, he didn't know where to get clothes. He saw some important people passing. He attacked them. Collect, collected their clothes. Naked them. Collected their clothes. And went to deliver to his wife. As long as he had a need, Samson could get it from anywhere. Whoever is going to last in leadership, not even only in leadership, in life, must be a person of principle. And I will show you areas. I think I'll try to show you six or seven areas that you must have strong principles and draw, draw boundary lines. Samson was a man without boundary. Are you here with me? I didn't hear you now. Ah. So boundary line, very important things that the devil can capitalize on to destroy you. Now, what do we mean by boundary lines? Boundary lines are rules you should set for yourselves and enforce yourself to follow. Boundary lines are rules that you should set for yourself and enforce yourself to follow it. You set for yourself and you enforce yourself to follow you set for yourself and you enforce yourself. Now, I may be branching using school and everything. I know I was talking to our teachers. So we had meeting in the Enable School. I was telling them, we, can, we all cannot be coming to school anytime we like. So I told the HM, go and prepare the rules. He now came. He said, okay, sir, at 7 a.m. on Monday, 7.30, 7.30, other days. Okay, what would be penalty? He said, penalty is whoever miss." If you don't act, act, get to school by 7 a.m. on Monday, it's 100 naira. So everybody will come and feel. When I wanted to pay, we brought calculator out. It only what it get. I get not lose your thing. me moshe. I Everybody was checking their own. It was four thousand. It was three two. It was one five. We now said, okay, we are going to call this month the month of grace. Ah, they were shocked. I said, you know, you are the one that set the rules. So we are going to call this month the month of grace. Then the next month will be the month of judgment. That principle is to elude you, but so think we say share. You know why Samson fell easily? Samson was a man of no principle. I will show you areas that you need to focus on. Somebody said, listen, I wrote here. Somebody said, if you are not hard on yourself, you can't last at all. If you are, if you are not hard on yourself. Now, what does it mean to be hard on yourself? You know, at times... Some people have trained themselves in such a way that they, they wake up anytime their body wants to wake up. They eat anytime their body says eat. People that live like that don't last. Now let's look at areas. Let's see, I wrote here, let's see some of the areas you should set boundary. You put that one in alphabetical order. A. When it comes to opposite sex. When it comes to opposite sex, you must learn to draw line. In your relationship with opposite sex, hear me, draw a line. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, look at what the Bible says. 
You can't relate with an opposite sex the way you, re we, you relate with somebody of your same sex. At least if we say some people didn't go to school. Everybody I see here, there is nobody that didn't go to secondary school. At least you must have done biology. In biology, I, I don't even forget chromosomes. I asked my wife, I used to tell her, if my body is my, I used to tell her, the chromosomes are moving in my body. Oh. When we are together, chromosomes are like meeting in oh. In biology, didn't see they teach you a big teacher at your back with chromosomes in it. The way God created the male and the female body, listen, they turn each other on. Man is a spirit. He has a soul, but he lives in the body. That's why you can feel hungry. That's why you can feel like sleeping. That's why you can feel like having sex. You are leaders. I need to talk to you. Look at what the Bible says. Where's, where's that, that scripture? I said, give me the scripture. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Listen, if you remove the word appearance, it means ab abstain from all evil. But the Bible didn't say so. The Bible put appearance. Match Don't wait until it becomes evil. But Samson did not draw the line. He did not draw the line. That's why you see that three women were the came to his life and the three of them took one thing, something from him. The first one was that Timnath girl. It was because of that Timnath girl, he became an enemy of the, of the Philistines. The second one was that prostitute whose house he slept. Something left his destiny. The third one was Delilah. That one was what the one that handed him over completely to the Philistine. Sir, ma, if you are going to last in life and in leadership, you have to draw a line in your relationship with the opposite sex. If you are poor in your, in your if you are pure in your heart, do you think whether the other person is? If you think you are strong, do you think whether the other person is strong? Where you are saying, ah, cousin, ah, brother, ah, brother, ah, the day he will climb you, you'll be shocked. Draw a line. You must set boundaries on how far in your relationship with an opposite sex you must go before you say, no, 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 this one is, is out of it. Hello, me only. Are you learning something at all? I wrote here, the first golden rule you must apply in dealing with the opposite sex is that you must never trust yourself that much to be careless with them. Let me come again. The first golden rule you must apply in dealing with the opposite sex is that you must never trust yourself that much to be careless with them. There was one, uh, <laughs> you know, he handled so many things in counseling. I've handled a case before of one of our brothers in our church that slept with his cousin. The girl was always coming back. Oh, my, my, my uncle, my uncle, my uncle. But brother was feeling something anytime the girl is hugging. And he senior her very well. He, he said he did. He, sir, I did it. Oh, I know why he confessed. From the day he did it, his manhood stopped working. I was just leading prayer. And the Lord led prayer point towards that direction. He came to see me. What did you do? When he told me, well, the Lord said I should tell him to go and confess to the family that there's something in their family that he himself did not know. 
Up to today, he couldn't confess. Up to today, he cannot do anything. What he did over 20 years ago. Draw, learn to draw the line. You will hear our mentors will tell us, oh, I'm a pastor, but my secretary cannot be a female. You, you think they are stupid? You know, uh, Pastor Adebe said one on, online and everybody, the, all these, uh, uh, what do you call them, bloggers, began to mock him. He said, I went to my son's office and his personal secretary is a lady. I had to call my son immediately. Sack her and get a mail. And you know bloggers, people who don't see the future. They came up, oh, his gender, whatsoever. Learn to, no boundaries. But some of you, you are just looking like a um, sister, what was that girl that they rape in the Bible? Tamani. Uh, they raped uh, Diana too, but the one that the brother raped. Taman. Brother say, cook for me, cook. Serve it, he serve it. Bring it into my bedroom. He brought it. Close the door, he closed it. Come and put it in my mouth, didn't he? It was when he was putting it in the mouth that brother held him. And she was begging, please don't do anything. Instead of her to be shouting. And you allowed to go by me. Set boundary. Sister Yemi, you may not remember, but me, I used to remember things. You know, you did, you did one thing many years ago. But very, very intelligent. I will say it now, you will remember. There's a brother, she was, she were, they were close because they land work the same place. And Now, this particular day, she said, somebody was telling the brother, ah, your wife was referring to her. She said she looked at the face of the brother. The brother too is married now, you know. He said the brother didn't see anything. He said, but she, dis you remember? Or you have forgotten? That was when she began to space. But something fell because, see, there was no boundary. If I tell you the number of people falling into sexual sin, that sexual sin have taken what God has invested in their lives, I'm telling you the fact, it's very alarming. Tell your neighbor, set boundaries when it comes to the issue of the opposite sex. I wrote here, watch the kind of words you use. The devil can use it to set you up. You are looking at somebody that is not your spouse's. You are saying, hello dear, hello darling. You're looking beautiful, baby. The devil could use it to set you up. Somebody that is not your husband. You are looking at him and say, ah, ah, ah. my husband. You are, you, to you, you are joking. You are passing the message. Why do you think that in engineering, the, the taller the building and the plan, the deeper the foundation? Anyone that will go far, will dig deep. Whoever will go far, will dig deep. Whoever will go far, will walk deep and deep upon his or herself. Watch your attitude, the, sorry, what the kind of attitude do you display with an opposite sex. Watch the kind of attitude. Must you hug a person to show appreciation Leaders, I'm talking to you. Like our, daughter, our sister now, she's going to be 50. Let me now say, ah, let, I, I, I need to show you that I, I appreciate that you are 50. I'm now going to say, ah, my dickness, my dickness, happy 50. Am I a husband? You may not count it to be anything. 
Listen, you may do it with her. Her intention is pure. But the devil will be bringing you close and he will set a trap for you in that direction. Set boundaries. And let the line be so clear that everybody will know that when it comes to this, so this, person's, this person is very strict. Am I communicating? I don't want you to fall. Sister, brother, brother, It is the boundaries you didn't set. One very good, uh, uh, when I say anointed, this brother was very anointed, very anointed, very gifted, sings a lot. In my mentor's church, brother sing. Tomani, brother, I am Korean, Korean. It's one of the stars that we're looking at. So I was not asking, this brother has not been singing again. What happened? They said he fell to fornication. One of their leaders said, they used to tell him, this food that small, small girls will be bringing to you, and you will just be eating. It is well with you. This food that small, small girls are bringing to you, and you will just be eating. This thing will destroy you one day. Eventually, it happened. She said boundaries. Can I go on? Or are you angry? Set it as a boundary line to know when to call yourself to order your level of closeness to an opposite sex must be defined. Know when to call for help. It must be defined. Know when to call for help. It must be what? Defined. Which means, analyze it. What, why, why is this person close to me? Define it. And when it is going to a point, no when to say, ah, hey, I don't understand what is going on again. No. Why will brother, brother, let me not use brother Chukudi, why will brother I.K. buy pant and bra for me as birthday present? No, no when, are you getting what I'm saying? No when to, to draw the line. They say, ah, no, it doesn't matter. It matters to so, so where you are going. There was one brother like that. That, that, that what, what, I bought a bra for my wife. My wife now asked him, how did you know my size? He said, I used my hand to measure it. I was measuring. When you're on the other, I was measuring. That was the last time my wife cancelled like he handed him, out, he handed him over to me straight. So which means when I'm, pre when I'm preaching, something else you are looking at. No, nobody that fell wanted to fall. Even the devil didn't want to fall. He only wanted a place that is above that of God. And he didn't know that that desire we told him to the devil from Lucifer. Let's leave this one. Let's go to the next one. Set boundaries when it comes to what, what, where, and how you eat. What you eat, where you eat, and how you eat. <laughs> if you are going to last in leadership, this one too is very important. You know, one, one of us, I can say it here because um, we are leaders. One of us was celebrating, they were celebrating something. One of the members in church. And they brought food to us. And they were pressurizing. Pastor, pastor, pastor. Ah, the pressure was too much. I told my wife, I don't have the leading that we eat this food. So, we took the food home. I got to the entrance of our estate. 
we distributed it to all the security guards we have, we have our eight, eight security guards they ate they didn't die it's not all poison that is for death but i noticed that when we returned the person stopped greeting me they knew that i didn't eat Sir, it is not everything. Kilo by something. Kilo lo kunja kusun le dilaila. Ask for calorie. Dilaila, uh, something. The secret of your power. The thing, and he would give him some milk. He would drink. He will eat more. He will sleep on the lap. A person that wants to go far must also draw boundary lines. You know, in our church, I used to tell you, ministers don't eat in the house of members. I can't come to your house now and you put food in front of me. I won't eat it. Is it because I don't love you? No, now. Okay, I remember I brought you. I brought you. I brought you. Ah, what I can be a big papa, papa, they be in me. Okay, they want to be you. Now, and that law has been a law in our church for the past 20 years. And we are not willing to change it for any reason. Don't eat in members' house. That's why if we come, people pack, they pack it and put, if we are led to eat it when, we, when you pack, we eat. If you are not led to eat it, we give out. Something ate anywhere. Look at what the Bible says about food. Philippians chapter 3, 18 and 19. Let's be fast. Philippians chapter 3, 18 and 19. The Bible says, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are what? The enemies of the cross. Verse 19. They are the enemies of the cross. Whose end is what? Destruction. Whose God is what? Their belly. Whose glory is their shame. Who mind earthly things? Now, why is it their shame? Because they made their stomach their God. Anyone that wants to go far, there are places you don't eat. Let them know you with that principle. There are times you don't even eat. There's a point you want to eat, just like you want to be fit, you want to be healthy. Anything after 6 p.m. does not do good for to your body again. Any food you eat after 6 p.m. is poison to the human body. So you couldn't digest. But something didn't have rule. See, next one. Set boundaries. When it comes to who can be your bosom friend. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. When it comes to who can be your bosom friend. Now let me ask a question and I'll answer. Pastor, what should I consider most? What should be my major consideration when I want to choose a friend? Hear me, it is character. You don't choose a friend because the person is beautiful. You don't choose a friend because he's handsome. You don't choose a friend because he has money. You don't choose a friend because the person is popular. When it comes to choosing who should be your bosom friend, what should be your point of consideration? That's why it should take time to choose friends. What is study any dada? I wrote here in my notes: character should be the scale by which you decide. Who should be your friend? In 1 Corinthians 15.33. 1 Corinthians 15.33. Put it on screen for me. This is why you will need to take your time to prayerfully study people before you allow them to get close to you. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Some of you just wake up. It's my friend. It's my friend. It's my friend. 
friendship can do two things to you. It could either influence you positively or negatively. Because friendship is a door. It will either lead you somewhere or lead something to you. What was Samson doing on the land of the Philistine? Kulore come by to the Jew. Who is your friend? That's why if you are going to program yourself to last, watch the kind of people you choose as set boundary lines. In part of your boundary lines, it is there. I don't choose friends based on what any other thing but their character. So I'm sorry, you give me time to study. I'm, st I'm still studying you. You know, I was telling one of my daughters last week. She called, hey, hello, sir. Sir, uh, uh, my, uh, my fiancé wants to come and see you. It's like we are going to do introduction in December. She thought I would be happy for her. I said, how long did you know him? My first question. Because I'm a father. And I said, we met in August. You met him in August. This is November. I said, we can't count August till September. October. We are not even in November. You've just known him for two months. What church does he attend? He said, Redeem. Everybody attends Redeem. Have you visited his church? He said, No. I said, You know what? You start to find out about his church. Go visit the church without telling him. Decide to stay around to see the pastor. Let's start from there. I said, Introducing him to me is not the first thing. She now wanted to remind, remind me the testimony of Reverend Kutila. <laughs> you don't know that most problems that uh, problems that prophet cost, cost, it is pastors that suffer it. <laughs> prophet can just come and prophesy. Uh, you and you are to marry. When the crisis begins, you, you will, look for, will you look for it? It is pastor that we'll be going to settle. Eh, sister, you didn't cut long enough. Eh, sister, eh, they, you, you just discovered this part of him. You will have to endure. Eh, sister, pa, a pastor, hey, I'm packing out. Oh, a pastor, I'm kidding. Call. So I told her, I said, Sister, please hold on. Don't be that desperate for marriage. Go and do what I say you should do first. Oh, you don't know that Muslims disguise now to come and marry in church. Imagine you marry Michael that is in church that is not even born again. How marriage is? You now decide to go and marry a Muslim that that one did not even know anything. So set boundaries when it comes to friendship. Who is your friend? It takes time to choose bosom friends. Am I communicating? Ah, we are not talking. No. It's like we are angry today. Let's look at D. Ah, you are not right again. You have lost count. D. When it comes to, hear me, when it comes to continuous self-development, beloved, you will need to push yourself to study more, pray more, to improve yourself. So you need to set boundaries when it comes to continuous self-development. Set boundaries when it comes to continuous self-development. Before I married my wife, I have my study life. She came to our to the marriage with our own study life. We didn't kill our study lives. I didn't use my own to kill our own. She didn't use our own to kill my own. She meets with God 3 a.m. every day. My own is four. The family in Lati really re-established because I didn't want I don't want family to kill my own. She doesn't want family to kill our own. So the family one year and struggle pelu. We might do it for three days, not do it for another one week. Do it for another one week, not do it for two days. Oh, it's happening to you too. Because see, if you don't have a plan for spiritual growth, you can't grow. 
There is nothing any, any pastor can do about it. And listen, God will not promote you beyond your level of growth. That's why you see that some people are international stars in God's hands. Some are local stars in God's hands. That's why you see vessel unto honor and vessel unto dishonor. They all are vessels in God's hands. Bobashi prepare a sini. Let's look at it back up to that. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can you see? Study to show. Study to show. Now, I met my wife working for God. Hear me. I am married to her now. I don't have the power to stop her from working from God. Because I met her in it. I want to contact just Tafi She met, she she also met me. I remember my wife will remember now. There was a time we, we had serious financial challenge, serious one. And both of us were discussing. And she said she doesn't know whether if I can do other things. I said I cannot do other things. So no, it's just a suggestion. We discussed it at home. I said, if I do other things, this main one, I will forget it. She said, why? I said, I'm a kind of a person. It is where I'm going, I am going. And she said, okay, it's true. She can multitask, but me, I cannot. Elumi on the boundary. When it comes to growth. Your wife cry, ah, you are always doing money devotion, and your money devotion is affecting us. You stop money devotion. Your wife cry, ah, you are always going for Bible study. Ah, the time that we are supposed to be together, you are always in Bible study. You stop Bible study. She will soon tell you that ah, ah, you are not dead. Until you die, I cannot take your money, you will die. 